Okay, so I'm going to start out this little still life painting demo just by quickly taking a look at the composition and thinking about placement and size. So for one thing, I have just a, a little bit of turp on the brush, and that's just to get the paint flowing just a little bit more. So I'm just going to turp that out so you can kind of see how I'm using that. All right, so normally when I begin, instead of you know jumping in with color, I just thin down a little bit of one of the more transparent colors. And we're looking at um, just burnt umber all by itself with a little bit of turp. And so now I'm going to start to think about placement and where I want to put these items in the composition, what I want to crop, if anything. I really like that darker cup. I kind of want to make that more the focus of the picture. Um, so I'm just going to thin down that paint. And I'm just using like a really rough bristle brush right now. I'm trying to keep things loose. Maybe just place a little bit to indicate what I think the size of the cup could be. I'll note that there's a cast shadow that I really want to capture here that's coming off the back of the cup. And then before I get into detail, before I even finish drawing the cup, I'm going to place where I want the teapot in relation to that cup. So if I look at, you know, maybe the edge of the cup is out here, teapot handle right there, that's the rightmost part of it. I want to crop just a little bit of the teapot spout. So I'm going to make sure that I start with that. Now I know if I have the handle edge here and the spout is being cropped right here, which would bring the side of that body out to here. So see how I'm kind of just starting with what I want to have happen. I want that teapot handle to be here. I want that spout to go off the page just a little bit. And then I'm sort of working backwards from there saying, well, now I have enough room for the teapot to be this wide. And I want to make sure it's proportionate to this cup. I think it's, this cup's probably a little bit too big or the teapot's too small. So what I'm going to do is just kind of move these marks out just a little bit, give this a little more room, just adjusting. I do that all the time as I start. So we'll kind of work on you know, placing these objects without getting too detailed because often you're going to move them as you go. So a lot of times you'll start out thinking, okay, I have a good idea about where I want to put this. And you'll need to make adjustments to that. So don't get too detailed. Now I can see that if I just make this cup just like a little bit smaller, I think this is going to be just fine. So I discovered that pretty quickly. All right, now I know this pear needs to come up. And from my vantage point, which I'm going to give that still photograph a look right now so you can kind of see that, this pear is sort of intersecting with all the bottom of that handle it comes in towards the um, bottom left of the saucer. You can see where that intersection hits right there, where the pair hits the saucer. And I want to make a mark there. And I want to make sure that I can kind of draw my pair over to that area. And I thought the edge was here. I'm going to move it back to about there. So as you're working and adjusting and keeping it really loose, you may want to get rid of lines that didn't fall correctly or that you needed to make some adjustment to. So now you can just take a little more turf on your brush. I'm just going to scrub those out. And actually, that's fine. It works pretty well. It kind of becomes the shadow of that object. And this is a really loose approach. There's so many different approaches to drawing and to starting a painting. You know, I'm thinking of this more as like a quick study rather than like a long-term finished piece. So of course I don't want to spend, you know, six hours plugging away at this drawing, maybe using a grid, a photograph, getting it all perfect. 
because that really isn't necessary for what I'm trying to accomplish in this piece. I definitely have paintings that I want to spend more time with. But for this one, we're just going to go for a quick study. So with a time limit, you know that you don't have time for each step of this to be this overly involved thing. All right, so I shifted from moving my lines around a little bit. I figure, you know, as long as you got it on the brush, you might as well kind of scrub it through and start to fade in those shadow shapes. So this is what I usually do as I'm adjusting my drawing. I'll just use that paint that I'm kind of moving around and start to just block out where those shadows need to go. I'm looking at the teapot here and I want to look for some symmetry before I place that little handle. I think I had that a little too far over to the left. There we go. And so drawing that center line, I'm just kind of visually noticing it. That's about half. Now I can sort of see where to put that little handle on the top of the teapot. I'm just going to sketch this around right here. And all right, I kind of just want to take a second to get the big shadow shapes in. So any place you know the light is falling opposite that, it's going to be a shadow. It's also going to be some cast shadows. So we have two kinds to think about. We've got our cast shadows being sort of blocked from another object, like that pear is creating a cast shadow on the saucer. We've got our form shadows that come through here and wrap around the object this way. Okay, so I can kind of see the image. I can see the placement. I think where I may end up having a problem is this area. So I want to give this a little bit more attention. I want to make sure that I have the top of the pear not coming up just at the point of the top of that part of the handle. That's a weird little kind of tangent when those two edges touch. You really want to make sure that you're using those overlapping objects and edges as cues to the viewer to show them where things are located. So I want to put the pear in front of the teapot, then I want to make sure that I'm getting that edge of the pear, the top edge of the pear, in front of that teapot, and they're not trying to occupy the same space at the same time. Now the bottom of this is a little bit narrower come in here and just start to cut in on that. And I have this shaped a little weirdly. So go back through here. All right. There's a big cat shadow on the wall. And I want to get that in kind of quickly because I know that's going to be a big part of this composition. And the first thing I do whenever I'm starting a painting and definitely a silly painting for sure, um, is I want to just kind of block out where the light and shadow pattern is going to be and what that's going to look like. And so I'm just using that thin down burnt umber, a little turp to sort of make it movable. You'll know if it gets too thin because it will start dripping. You don't want that. So if that's the case, just you can even wait a few minutes have oil paint at home and you're working along with me, you can kind of wait a few minutes, let it set up again. You can wipe it off with a t-shirt or cloth, you know, that you have laying around. And then you can just kind of, it, it should set up enough so that you can go over it in maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes if it goes on a little bit too wet with this turf. All right. So now I have my three objects. I like the arrangement. I like how the um, value pattern is kind of working here. Just think about where this shadow is going to meet. And now I want to think about the outside space. So this is all a very dark blue cloth. And I can actually just go in. I'm not even using color yet. So just with that same mixture of burnt umber. bit of turp. And I could switch to a larger brush if I were so inclined to do that. But one thing that I do look for is that I'm 
not going to go as dark as my cast shadow. I do still want that to sort of be noticeable. I don't want to go so dark in the background that you can't see the cast shadow anymore. So it's kind of, you know, thinned out a little bit more than the color that I used on the cast shadow. And I can even just take a moment, go back, get a little bit of a darker value on my brush and then just kind of reinforce that cast shadow if I wanted to. I start to lose it. And that's also a nice way just to pull out like where those really dark shapes are going to be. I'm going to indicate a little bit of that table plane. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go a little darker. On the wall plane here. See that it's all really dark in here. So basically, if I go a little darker on that wall plane, I'll have to go just a little lighter on the table plane right below it. And I'm just going to take that brush, a little bit extra turf on there, and I'm scrubbing a little bit harder. So it's always this mixture and a balance between how much paint you have on your brush, how thin you've made that paint, and how much you're kind of pressing to move that paint across the surface of the canvas. And it's all just a matter of experimentation. So don't, you know, if you're trying this at home for the first time, don't get frustrated with it because it doesn't work like this right away. You'll kind of have to get to know how to mix that paint up and how much pressure to apply to create these different value washes. And it just takes a little practice. So, you know, rule of thumb, lighter you want it, you want to mix it out with a little more turf in it, you want to scrub it through a little heavier if you're pressing a little harder with the brush. And so now we can kind of see, even on that dark cloth, there's got to be some difference between the value that we use in this light area and the values that we use back here in the distance. So I'm not even really talking about the shadow value. I'm just talking about the difference in the cloth itself, right? So the light source is much closer here. It's hitting this area first. It's hitting it a little bit closer and more directly. It's going to be a little lighter there. So it's just the idea of kind of showing that candle power, even at the very beginning stages of a painting. Even at this block in, you can still get across That feeling of light. Now I'm just going back in and kind of still working my way around everything. All right. And I need to go back and just think a little bit about edges. I'm thinking maybe that was too sharp of an edge for a cast shadow that is falling on a dark cloth pretty far away. One thing that really recedes is soft edges, and I do want this area to recede quite a bit. So I'm going to make that edge here between the cast shadow and the fabric a little softer while I sharpen up edges in the foreground. And that will, again, enhance that uh, sense of depth. So I have one last thing to do, and that is to put on a little light layer over the um, white areas of the canvas. I don't like to leave white showing. So I just really turf this out quite a bit. It's pretty fluidy, moving quite well. And I just want to tone that down just a little. I waited a few minutes from starting after I had sort of filled in the shadows on these objects. And even that was long enough with this mixture for that to set just a little bit so that I'm not removing it as I work through. 
and it's actually darkening. So if I go over the entire thing, it's, it's not only darkening the light, you can still see that it's darkening the shadow a little bit. And if I need it to be more, I can go through, get a, a little bit more burnt umber on my brush. And we're gonna shade that in one more time. So I've got the cup to do. And I'd like to, you know, I'd like to have the surface just a little darker than it will eventually need to go. But if you go too far, like, Maybe I went a little far here. I'll show you what you can do. You can kind of scrub a little turf, and I just keep wiping off the brush, picking up a little bit. It's just getting a little bit lighter. So you can keep working that surface. You can keep adjusting the shape, whatever you need to do. And then my last object here, I'm just going to take a really light mixture and tone down that cup. And I have to think about the pear some more and how that pear is actually a lighter local color. It's yellow. It's a bright, bright, light value color, while the cup is sort of that like darker gray-blue color. It has a darker value, and I want to reflect that even in this underpainting. So I'm going to go back and darken this cup up one more time. Again, I'm just taking a little turp, scrub that through. You can even take a little towel and just lighten that because I just want that to feel just like a little bit lighter than that dark cup. So you can kind of see this would be something where if this was going to be a really long-term finished picture, I would absolutely stop and, you know, nail these values. Just really get these to work in comparison with one another. But for a study, I am perfectly fine. Just getting it just about, and I need to come back and just lighten up that edge. But sometimes you can take a rag if you go a little bit too far with your watch. And while that would work, this will work even better in a few minutes after this is set. I can still just go back and find that edge a little darker, even now. I mean, that was like five seconds before, you know, after I uh, applied all that turp to it. So it's pretty wet to be drawing an ellipse back into it, but even that kind of worked. And if you're having trouble, if you're struggling with like getting that drawing to go on, if it's it's the surface, it's just not taking the paints, it's maybe a little bit too wet with turf, you can just let it set up for just a couple minutes. All right. We are just about at the stage that I would like to kind of call the finishing bit of this block in, right? So when I look around, I just feel like you know, the pear, the cup are becoming a little bit more developed than the teapot. So I'm going to go back and just give this one more little pass. Try to even it out just a little bit. Be a bit more specific where the background is. Soften it up a little. Just generally try to describe it just a little bit more before I move on. So I always think that like you kind of want to think about creating a drawing or a painting in the way that a Polaroid develops. You want to see it kind of take shape all over all at once and not one specific area finish up and come into view before another area is really even started. So that's why I like to, you know, just do a little bit to each object and sort of make sure they're kind of caught up to one another. I 
make sure they're all sort of developing at the same pace, more or less. So when you've worked on one for a bit, stop, go on to another object, work back into that a little bit more. I'm trying not to really finalize the line a little bit, but just to set myself up for placing that edge a little bit later. This line is not you know, really defined at this stage. Just thinking about the overall form, making sure that it's looking a little symmetrical just for a start. All right, and I see this is quite a bit darker. There's so much contrast here. So I'm just gonna, probably the last thing I do on this little block and I'll just be like one more little background path. And just work that in. All right, so that concludes our block in. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I will post the next video which is gonna look at how to begin applying color. Thanks for watching.